Hey guys, welcome to part 1 of 3 of the BMAT 2016 section 2 full walkthrough. I've got the paper right here, my name is Firaz, I'm a Cambridge student and in this video I'm going to be showing you my solutions to this paper and how I would go about scoring full marks on this paper. If you guys are sitting in the BMAT this year, check out sigmamed.co.uk right now. Me and my friend Hamza have created a BMAT course that teaches you all the content and exam technique that you guys need to know to do well in the BMAT. It teaches you how to write the perfect section 3 essay with example marked essays. It teaches you the content for section 2, the exam techniques you need to use, and goes over countless worked examples. And it also teaches you the different question types in section 1, how to answer them with worked examples again. As well as this, we've also got the section 2 2022 full walkthrough on the course, as well as us being in the process of adding the section 1 walkthrough for 2022 as well. So this is something that if you're seeing in the BMAT is absolutely priceless, but we've priced it at just £30. That is less than the price of a single hour of tutoring, and in our opinion, it is really worth it if you're sitting in the BMAT this year, so check it out. But without further ado, here's part one of three of this walkthrough. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next parts, as well as the next walkthroughs I do. Okay, so let's get started on this walkthrough. So question number one, the diagram shows a kidney and its associated vessels from a healthy individual. Which row correctly identifies the vessels along with the concentration of urea that they contain? So first of all, in terms of the vessels, let's look at their profiles. This vessel has a large lumen and this vessel has a thicker muscular wall and a smaller lumen. So this is a vein and this is an artery. So therefore, the vessel with the lowest concentration of urea is going to be the vessel that takes away the cleaned blood from the kidney, which is going to be vessel number three, which is the renal vein. And then the vessel with the highest concentration of urea is going to be the vessel that contains the urine, which is vessel number five, which is the ureter. So therefore, the correct answer must be D, since 3 is the renal vein and has the lowest concentration of urea, and 5 is the ureta with the highest concentration of urea. Okay. Question number 2. Element X has the electronic structure 283. Which of the following statements about this element are correct? Okay. The element is in group 12, period 3 of the periodic table. That's wrong because the element would be in group 13 since it has three electrons in its outer shell. 2. The element reacts with oxygen to form a compound with the formula X2O3. That's correct because the number of electrons would be balanced. 2 times 3 is equal to 6 and 3 times 2 is also equal to 6. Okay. 3. The element reacts with bromine to form a compound with the formula XBR3. That is also correct, the reason being it has three outer shell electrons, so you'd need three bromines in order to form an atom, uh, sorry, to form a compound. Statement number four, the atomic number of the element is 13. This statement is going to be correct because the atomic number is the total number of protons, which is equal to the number of electrons. So therefore, 2 plus 8 is 10 plus 3 is 13, therefore the atomic number is 13. Statement 5, the element is an alkali metal. This is group 1 and the element is group 3. So therefore the statement's wrong and therefore statements 2, 3 and 4 are correct and the correct answer option is F. Okay. Question number 3 then. A student carries out an experiment to determine the density of the material from which two identical solid objects are made. She uses a balance and measuring cylinder containing fixed volumes of liquid. The diagrams show different stages of her experiment with some of the readings on the balance and some of on the measuring cylinder. Which calculation should be made to determine the density of the material from which the object is, objects are made? So first of all, density is equal to mass over volume. So we have three masses. The difference between the second and third mass is going to give us the weight of a single object and in this case it's 300 grams okay and we have two volumes the difference between these two volumes is 100 centimeters cubed and that's when you add two of the objects 
So therefore, the volume of one object is equal to 50 centimeters cubed. So if we do mass divided by volume, it's going to be the calculation that is 300 over 50, which from these answer options is answer option D, which is the correct answer. Okay. Question number four, though. A straight line passes through the points P minus 3, 3 and Q, 6, 9. Which of the following is an equation of a straight line which is parallel to PQ? So all we need to know is that parallel lines have the same M, which is gradient. So we can use the formula M is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. M is therefore equal to 9 minus 3 over 6 minus minus 3, which is equal to 6 over 9, which is 2 over 3. Therefore, we're just looking for the answer option, where the equation in the form y is equal to mx plus c, where m is equal to 2 over 3, and that is going to be answer option A. Okay. Now, question number 5. The diagram shows some of the stages of how a length of DNA can be removed from one organism and introduced into another organism. Cut out by x, w cut by y, inserted using z, which row is correct. Okay, so w is a chromosome, so it's one of the first three answer options. x is going to be a restriction enzyme, which is used to cut, so it's one of the first two answer options. Y is going to be, again, a restriction enzyme because we're cutting. And Z is going to be a ligase since we're using it to glue in. Remember, restriction enzymes cut, ligases are like glue. You use them to add something to a plasmid. So the correct answer option is going to be B then. Okay. Now, question number six. Which of the following mixtures could not be separated using the technique given? Okay. Calcium carbonate and water can be separated by evaporation since the water will just evaporate away and the calcium carbonate will remain. Pentane and octane have different boiling points, so fractional distillation can separate them. Silicon dioxide and water, filtration, again this works because silicon dioxide is sand and if you filter out sand, the you're going to get the water. D, sodium chloride and water, distillation will work because the water is going to boil off first. And ethanol and water, you can't separate them by a separating funnel because they're both liquids. So important to read the question, which of the following mixtures could not be separated using the technique given? That is mixture E. Okay. So now question number seven. Nickel has an atomic number of 28. The mass of four of its isotopes are 58, 60, 61, and 62. And there are three statements about these isotopes of nickel. Which statements are correct? Number one, all of them have the same chemical properties. This is going to be correct because they, the chemical properties are based on the number of electrons and between isotopes, it's the same number of protons and electrons but a different number of neutrons which don't affect the chemical properties. Two, all of them have nuclei containing 28 protons. That's correct because they all have the same atomic number. Three, one of them has a nucleus that contains 62 neutrons. That's wrong. It has 62 total protons and neutrons, but the number of neutrons alone is going to be 34. So therefore, only statements 1 and 2 are correct, and the correct answer option is D. Okay, question 8 then. The mean mass of a group of people, n people, is 75. So the total is 75 n. Jim, Karen, and Leroy join this group without anyone leaving. The new mean mass is 78 kilograms. So the new total mass is... 78 n plus 3. Okay, the mean mass of Jim, Karen, and Leroy is 90 kg. So the mean is the total divided by the number of people, therefore, their total mass must be 90 times 3, which is 270 kg. So now we can form an equation 75 n plus 270 is equal to 78 bracket n plus 3. We're essentially saying when you add Jim, Karen, and Leroy, the total mass is going to become 78n plus 2. So now we get 75n plus 270 
is equal to 78n plus 3 times 70 is 210, 3 times 8 is 24, so 234. If we take the n's to one side, we get 78n minus 75n is equal to 270 minus 234. 3n is equal to 36, therefore n is equal to 12 which is answer option B, which is the correct answer. Now, question number nine. Which of the following, the following statements are features of an enzyme from a healthy human? Which enzyme has these features? Number one, it works at an optimum pH of below four. So that's gonna be something to do with stomach acid. B, it digests two, it digests the substrate into amino acids, proteases. It works at an optimum temperature of approximately 37 centigrade. This is just all bodily enzymes, pretty much. So therefore, it's going to be some type of protease. And most likely, it's going to be answer option F, which is the correct answer, because it's a protease from the stomach, works at a low pH, digests substrate into amino acids. Therefore, for question 9, the correct answer is F. Okay, so this is that is part 1 of 3 of this walkthrough finished. If you guys are studying the BMAT this year, I would definitely recommend checking out sigmamed.co.uk. Me and my friend Hamza have put together an online BMAT video course that consists of over 60 videos and over 30 worked examples. It has tutorials on sections one, two, and three, teaches you how to write a section three essay, has worked examples for all sections, and overall is really worth the price of just 30 pounds. We're also adding the section two and section 1 2022 walkthroughs to the course all for the price of less than one hour of tuition i implore you guys to check it out if you're seeing the bmat this year thank you for watching this video and subscribe for part two